I want to bring up some of the specific uh, criticisms that uh, the the surfaced in the backlash to your nomination, just because there's been a lot of stuff floating around about what your positions are or are not. I saw that you actually had to correct a uh, the isidewith.com website, which uh, is one of the popular websites that uh, lists what a candidate's positions are. Um, so I want to bring up a few uh, of the uh, notions about your views and have you clarify what it is you stand for. Uh, I just picked this tweet by a user named Amuse because it kind of boils it down to a lot of what I've heard. Um, he says, libertarians, by nominating Chase Oliver, the LP just alienated every Silicon Valley libertarian I know. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, their presidential nominee supports transitioning children, mask and vax mandates, men and women's sports, and open borders. Uh, and then it has you uh, at, looks like maybe a gay pride parade holding a rainbow flag that says, don't tread on me, um, which I, I'm not sure that there's anything wrong with that picture unless you have a problem with gay people. But uh, let's start with transitioning children. Um, uh, what is your stance on puberty blockers, surgeries, so forth for children? So in terms of healthcare, I want to keep healthcare out of government's hands. I support parents making decisions for their kids. I'm not in support of trans and kids. I'm supportive of parents meeting with their doctor to determine the best healthcare decisions for their kids on a case by case basis, which the most common treatment for kids who are suffering from gender dysphoria under the age of 18 is merely socially transitioning. The fact is, is this is only a few thousand kids across the country when there's over half a million kids in foster homes right now who suffer far greater rates of abuse. But I'm always inclined to leave healthcare to the decisions of a, of a patient, a doctor who they consult with, and if they are a parent, the child being the advocate for that parent. And ultimately, a doctor should not be required by government nor insurance company or any kind of mandate to violate their oath or their uh, or, or their desire to help and heal. Period. I think when you frame it like healthcare, that sort of gives the entire game away, right? This is the same as the argument that a lot of pro-trans activists use, you know, talking about it in the form of, you know, you would you rather have a, you know, an alive you know, a, a dead son or an alive daughter, basically the, the implication being that if you disallow a child to transition, then, you know, the mental illness that the child will suffer from could end in suicide. And so, of course, what, you know, empathetic parent wouldn't make that decision in that case. I think framing it as healthcare sells the detractors, some of whom are operating in very good faith, quite short. I mean, we just had Jesse Single on this podcast. And one point that Jesse makes time and time again is that the best evidence we have about tr gender transitions for children thus far comes from the CAS review, which was just published in the United Kingdom, which really is pretty damning for a lot of the people on the side of doing this invasive, these types of invasive treatments for children. So like, as far as like, I, I can understand wanting to get the state out of it as much as possible, but like, how can you not look at it and sort of see a situation where we are just, you know, make <laughs> allowing Minor, minors are making decisions and parents are making decisions for minors with the help of doctors, with the help of an activist class that has spurred this along in a way where we just like don't have longitudinal, good, high quality studies as to how this affects kids. Hey, I say let those studies take place and they should do so outside of the confines of the government. Let independent organizations do these things. But in the meantime, you should be allowed to seek the health care you want. There's all kinds of medications. Guess what? Government said taking ivermectin was bad for you, and many people just decided to do it anyway. They took the choice. They didn't want the government to ban that choice. Same with anything else related to COVID. We didn't want vaccine mandates on us. We didn't have to hold what our treatment has to be. We took care of our own lives, and we need to apply that to every area of healthcare. This is exactly why it relates to healthcare, because it is a healthcare issue. This is not an issue that is any different from any other care that a physician, a patient needs, and when they're a minor, their parents are in charge of that. Parents can uh, you know, have that sovereignty because they have unconditional love for their kids. They want to see their kids survive and thrive. They're going to be a better advocate than a board or a bureaucrat. And certainly one size fits all healthcare is not libertarianism. That is not freedom. We need to have the ability for individuals to choose what to do on a case by case basis. And like I said, this is being very overblown considering the most common treatment is social transitioning. These, uh, these cases that are being brought forward to make it seem like every kid who questions their gender is automatically thrown on puberty blockers or on hormone replacement therapy is just not telling the full truth. I recommend that detractors 
meet with families who have trans kids, as I have all of the country. I met a young I don't, person I don't who think drove that's two fair. hours to see me. I don't think that's fair, right? Like I have, you know, a bunch of trans friends and I have parent friends because I'm also a parent who have had gender questioning children, right? Like to act as if it's like merely a lack of knowledge about this sells short the arguments that people like me are making, which is that I don't think it's freedom either to have a situation where we've very much had this activist class that has been highly successful with influencing a lot of gatekeeper <clears throat> medical organizations in the United States to make it seem like the only acceptable way to treat a gender questioning kid is to socially transition them or to get them on puberty blockers. Like, I mean, to me, that's so not freedom. To me, that's a very moneyed activist class that has really played a significant role in changing the narrative around this discussion when I don't understand why children in many cases couldn't just wait until they're actual adults and can more fully make decisions for themselves. Because when you're dealing with minors, you are dealing with this challenge of like, well, to what degree should the parent be empowered to make the decisions for the minor versus to what degree does the minor child really need to take some time to actually become a full legal adult before making this choice? So here's the thing. You mentioned the gatekeepers of information, things like this. The best way to get rid of them is to tear down the gatekeepers and not have any. No National Institute of Health or FDA or CDC that's guiding this stuff. Let culture actually decide that. What I'm Free even market talking about. Of, of minds decide that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm even talking about the APA and even the fact that like journalists have been instructed by like the Associated Press Style Guide, which is the style manual that all journalists use to use terms like gender affirming care, which again, when we begin to frame these things in certain terms, we're giving the entire argument one side of the argument. We're sort of skewing things in favor of them. Right. I, I believe we hear both sides. I believe we hear both sides of the argument quite a bit. And, and trust me, those are not government institutions. Any government institution shouldn't be trying to guide one thing one way or another. Let culture, free markets and free minds do that stuff. And that's where that's going to come from. And you may disagree with how things are done. That's the free marketplace of ideas. And I support that. I support people having their own opinions on these things. I would never, ever try to tell you how to raise your kids. And I don't want to tell other parents how to raise their kids because that's not my job. My job is to reduce the size and scope of government and the abuses that exist. Should well, hold, let, let me let me drill. Hold on, Liz. Let me drill, drill down into what I see as the core of this. Maybe disagreements, because I think it's it's really important for libertarians to uh, think about, uh, you know, wh where they stand on this issue. It's one of the big culture war issues right now. Um, and it's important for parents. It's important for kids. Um, it's it's important for for everyone. That's why we did an hour and a half with Jesse Single on this. And what I hear Liz saying is that there's been a very one sided discourse about this be, and uh, people have been shut down from questioning the guidance, um, you know, call, kind of marginalized or called uh, bigots or transphobes and, and stuff like that. And what I hear Chase saying is that the libertarian position, uh, it, I, I mean, first of all, it sounds like Chase sort of agrees that, you know, free discourse is the is the part of the solution here, but also that um, the you have to decide who ultimately is the decision maker. Is it the state? Is it these bureaucratic boards or is it the parents when you're talking about a minor? Um, do you have a disagreement there, Liz, with his proposal that ultimately, given what we know now, the parents need to be the ones working in consultation with their doctors instead of the states, you know, putting these mandates forth? Is well, that I, I mean, yeah. are you comfortable with the state allowing parents and doctors to decide to follow a child's wishes and to surgically transition? Like, say they surgically transition an eight-year-old. Is no, that surgical transition is for 18 and older. No, I, I've always okay. had the position that surgery is for 18 and older. And but I do want to say this. Why isn't it a situation where the parent gets to rule? Like, why does the state get to intervene in that case? Well, I want to. I just want to speak to that last thing that Zach said, saying that there are people who are saying, well, you're a bigot or you're a hater, and that's dividing the question up and that's creating division. It, the same division happens when people say that parents of trans kids are child abusers, groomers, that they're pedophiles. These kinds of accusations come from the other side of that argument. If we're going to have real open discourse with free open discourse, transparent information, and actually discussing the issue instead of attacking each other. That has to come from both sides of this issue. There's huge division here. And I'm somebody who is willing to reach my hand out. I will listen to just about anybody. If it can be done with respectful discourse without creating, you know, narratives that, well, you believe this way, so you must immediately be this. That is not the way to go about freedom and free discourse. That is just insulting each other. And I would say, if you look at the discourse that's been happening between me and the people who have been commenting, who has been throwing more hatred and division out there? I've been called all kinds of things 
by people who don't like me. And guess what I haven't been doing? Returning fire because I know that that is not a way to constructively build a conversation. And when they want, and when folks want to have a constructive conversation, I'll be right here waiting to have it. Yeah. So I'm here having that conversation. What is your response to why the state should, like, why would the state be the decision maker with regard to surgical transitions after age 18 versus the parent? Like, like why? Because I always have bought, please. Yeah. Yes, because surgery is a 100% irreversible procedure and puberty blockers and HRT, while not perfect, have been shown to have uh, be mostly reversible and you can get off of them. And surgery, just like tattoos, and frankly, if you're, uh, you know, I'm against circumcision personally, I believe that's also body modification, uh, but I would like to see that done uh, for adults, if, if at all possible, without, of course, religious exemption for that last thing I mentioned there, but everything else should be up to an adult to be making those decisions. It's why my uh, 16-year-old niece, when she was 16, she said she wanted to get a tattoo. And they said, nope, you're not getting that. Uh, in regards to any other kind of body modification, we've set the standard of adulthood, and it should continue to be the standard for body modification surgery. Well, you've but, heard but it here is, first. That uh, is a situation, the, the, though. The anti-circumcision where... movement, uh, Chase where... Oliver is your man. Um, now, I, I want to uh, But I do think that's the... inconsistent, okay. right? Because, like, why should the state prevent that? Right. If a parent, if there's a 16 year old minor child and the parent and the doctor, like, why is it that we're not using the same logic that we use with puberty blockers or HRT related to surgical transition? Like, because physical because removal of a body part is different than taking a medication. It shouldn't be that difficult to see. It's two entirely different kinds of healthcare treatments. And one of them is a far more drastic treatment that should be reserved for adults. But we don't want the state involved in healthcare decisions at all. We want the state involved in healthcare decisions up until age 18, like, or I think that's inconsistent. So we have, we have an age of adulthood for all kinds of things like tattoos. I don't want, I don't want kids getting tattoos. I don't want kids deciding, uh, that, uh, getting a nose job or getting a boob job or anything like that. I think that can wait until you're 18 year old and you as an adult can determine that for yourselves. That's up to you to do. And I've always had that standard and I always will. You can say it's inconsistent, but surgery is very different than medical treatment via medicine. Hey. Thanks for watching that clip from our show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. And please subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel and the Just Asking Questions podcast feed for notifications when we post new episodes every Thursday.